now you may have a question that uh, the transaction was already declined then why are we sending it for of offline fraud monitoring right the answer is transaction getting declined by authorization engine does not guarantee that it was initiated by the card holder himself or it was triggered from a safe merchant or a safe website it is possible that even for this decline there might be some fraud and suspicious activity hi everyone in my last video we talked about uh, real time and near real time fraud monitoring and today we are going to explore what i believe are the best industry practices and especially when it comes to the fraud assessment but if you missed my last video i strongly recommend checking it out first so that you can easily relate to the things and you will find the link in the description below i'm ramesh chuk and you are watching the domain podium where we simplify banking and payments to empower your understanding and confidence so let's get started let's break this down uh, by looking at two different scenarios uh, with an example of card present or card not present transaction uh, as usual uh, i just want to take uh, a transaction scenario and imagine that a transaction is initiated by someone from a physical terminal or online website or any mobile application so the transaction finally hits to the issuing system it goes through merchant acquiring car network uh, before ultimately you know reaching the any issuing switch so that's a normal uh, flow of transaction that we used to cover in multiple videos right so uh, any user performs a transaction and then finally transaction is reaching to the issuing system when issuing switch uh, i mean to say the issuing transaction switch uh it receives the transaction how things move from there now let's understand one by one both the scenario so the first one is when one of the validation in authorization engine fails in the last video we did talk about like first of all authorization engine uh, will do a lot of validations like card card holder uh, pin cvv and all, all of those validations right so what i'm saying now is like in scenario 1 let's assume that when one of the validation in authorization engine fail for example pin is wrong or cvv is wrong or customer does not have sufficient funds available in his account in all such cases when uh, one of such validation is failed okay the result uh, is an outright decline because if your pin is wrong ultimately authorization engine cannot approve your transaction or any other type of validations like cvv or chip data is not correct or you don't have sufficient fund right see these are some genuine declines like an authorization engine is designed to decline such transaction up front right and therefore i'm saying like when one of such validation fails in the authorization engine in this scenario our transaction is clearly declined and cannot be proceed for approval at this moment since one of the validation is already failed authorization engine decides to go near real time monitoring with the fraud engine uh, since your transaction is already declining right so there is no point in uh, going ahead with the real time monitoring and send this transaction to the fraud engine in real time and wait for the response right because whenever the transaction lands to the issuer switch we learned that in the previous video the first module is the authorization engine so your first module itself is declining the transaction because there are something wrong with the transaction right for that reason authorization engine says no this transaction cannot be approved right therefore all the declines from authorization engine uh, will be first of all responded back to the card network with the rejection code and merchant uh, or or card holder or a customer will see that the transaction is declined so if you are doing it on a website of course you will see a decline in front of you if you are doing it at a point of sale terminal then again your post machine will uh, you know print a receipt with the decline messages the first thing that authorization engine did is uh, performed all the validations it encountered a failure in one of the validation responded back to the card network and then subsequently this transaction now will be forwarded to the fraud engine in a near real time scanning now you may have a question that uh, the transaction was already declined then why are we sending it for of offline fraud monitoring right the answer is 
ट्रांजेक्शन गेटिंग डिक्लाइन बाय ऑथोराइजेशन इंजन डज नॉट गारंटी दैट इट वॉज इनिशिएटेड बाय द कार्ड होल्डर हिमसेल्फ और इट वॉज ट्रिगर्ड फ्रॉम अ सेफ मर्चेंट और अ सेफ वेबसाइट इट इज पॉसिबल दैट इवन फॉर दिस डिक्लाइन देर माइट बी सम फ्रॉड एंड सस्पिशियस एक्टिविटी let me try to you know explain you little more deeper as i mentioned in my previous video there is pattern based fraud monitoring uh, for example uh, consecutive transactions with incorrect cvv or incorrect pin or there are multiple uh, transactions on different different cards randomly from the same merchant so all these type of behavior and the pattern already raises a red flag like for any fraud monitoring system like it is a red flag like why all of the sudden there are many transaction from the same merchant why like all of the sudden one customer is performing continuously incorrect pin so these kind of behavior and pattern already uh, you know uh, indicates that there is something wrong therefore it is important for any fraud engine or any fraud system to record all these behavior and if any subsequent transaction aligned with a uh, you know fraudulent pattern that the authorization engine could not catch those transaction should be declined by the fraud engine in real time therefore the conclusion is configuring fraud assessment in near real time for transactions already declined by the authorization engine is a sound practice because if you don't do this what will happen if you will not send the decline transactions which were declined by authorization engine to fraud engine fraud assessment will not be performed and any such pattern or sequence of uh, multiple transactions or multiple incorrect pin cannot be recorded by the fraud engine now let's quickly understand the second scenario and so that we can connect the dots okay unlike the first situation where the transaction is declined by the authorization engine in this case when the transaction is approved by the authorization engine it is really important to hold the response or hold the request within the authorization engine and do not send the response to card network because at that point in time real time monitoring is really crucial for this particular transaction why it is crucial because this particular transaction for which authorization engine could not find any problem pin is correct cvv is correct emv data customer has sufficient balance like all the validations are good right so authorization engine could not find any problem but it could be possible that this transaction could have relation to the previous pattern based assessment therefore this step of real time monitoring in this scenario ensures that any potential suspicious activity or fraud activity can be intercepted and prevented up front now we will take an example and try to establish a logical link between the previous scenario and the second scenario there is any fraudulent merchant who is sending uh, you know transactions randomly with some random card data it could be possible initially the first 3 4 or some of the transactions may get declined due to incorrect pin wrong cvv or some other reason by the authorization engine but the main point to remember is all such declines are assessed by fraud engine in offline monitoring like in a real real near real time monitoring as a result of this what will happen this pattern of the transactions uh, you know behavior like 3 4 5 or multiple transactions are getting rejected either from the same merchant different cards or the same card is getting recorded by the fraud engine in a real, near real time <clears throat> right now consider that one of the transaction in the same sequence could be fifth sixth or seventh whatever it is okay that attempt uh, of that merchant uh, is successfully passed all the validations in authorization engine like pin is correct cvv is correct everything is correct right and therefore the transaction is clear from the authorization engine at this stage now this transaction will enter the real time monitoring now fraud engine while doing the real time assessment a pattern based rule can be triggered because previously the pattern was recorded 
and therefore now fraud engine can easily identify that this particular transaction belongs to the same pattern or the same sequence and therefore it can take a decision to decline this transaction now let me tell you the another benefit of this the success of uh, fraud assessment not only declined a pattern based fraudulent transaction but also the fraud engine can actually include this merchant data into the negative database or it can blacklist the merchant so let me repeat the sequence one more time first of all few transactions got declined because of some incorrect data pin cvv whatever it is and fraud engine recorded all the pattern uh, in the near real time now the subsequent transaction in the same sequence everything is clear from the authorization point of view nothing wrong and that's why this transaction was forwarded to the fraud engine in real time so now the difference is there right when when there was a decline it was a near real time monitoring now when there is an approval from the authorization engine it is a real time but what happens fraud engine because previously it recorded the pattern it identifies that this particular transaction belongs to the previous pattern only and that's why there was a clear reason for uh, for fraud engine to decline this transaction therefore now this makes the story complete and and i hope that you would have understood why it is important to scan and review every single transaction regardless of whether it gets approved by the authorization engine or declined by the authorization engine and you would have also understood the true role of real time and near real time monitoring another point worth mentioning is that Uh, the example that i have taken those are very basic examples and easy to understand however the fraud engine is highly you know sophisticated uh, technology driven rule based engine uh, that ensures the safety and the security of banking transactions and account and it's always good to understand these services and banking systems so that you can use the technologies and digital payments with a lot of confidence and comfort and at the same time don't forget to take necessary actions if you notice any such fraudulent activity suspicious activity on your account and inform this to bank without any delay with that we conclude today's session thank you so much for watching and until we meet again goodbye